with DC pursuing its own distribution, it's led some retailers and some critics to basically compare it to the Heroes World situation back in the 90s, where Marvel had their own exclusive distributor. But it's really nothing like that. And to make that comparison is uh, disingenuous at best and kind of fear-mongering at worst. But let's take a look at Heroes World and from a you know perspective of somebody who was there, me, and what went wrong and why it's very different this time. Hey everybody, this is Perch, um, out for a walk in these uh, uh, social distancing times out in the middle of nowhere. I'm just a weirdo talking to himself on the phone. Um, Heroes World was a distributor who, back in the early 90s, uh, was purchased by Marvel to be their exclusive distributor. And at the time, there were there were many distributors, but there are two kind of giants. There was Diamond and there was Capital City. And if memory serves, I think Heroes World was kind of the third at that point. But there was a bunch of other smaller ones. And by uh, nine, early 90s, 92, 94, um, it was clear that not all of them were going to survive. The smaller distributors were, were not going to be able to compete. The infrastructure needs were changing. Um, and the speculator market was driving a lot of scale. And with scale came the need for operational efficiency. A lot of small distributors didn't have it. But it seemed like for a while you had your pick of Capital City or Diamond and you could kind of do what you want to do and, and both seemed to service things pretty well. And then there was Heroes World, which was um, it, which is fine, which kind of had grown up uh, from Marvel uh, as somebody who had, uh, had created that um, from uh, Ivan Snyder. Not created from Ivan. Ivan Snyder, who worked for Marvel, uh, went in and kind of purchased and, and took over Heroes World. And uh, what happened was that in 94, Marvel, who had their comics distributed all over the place, was trying to kind of consolidate their business. And why they were doing this was they had just gone public. Uh, they had they were kind of riding a pretty strong wave in the sense that they had, they had launched X-Men to record numbers. They had Jim Lee. They had Tom McFarlane. They were, they were pretty much of the belief that not only were they in touch with the 90s and with the tastes of comic readers, but they had some of the biggest creators. They had some of the biggest superheroes and and DC was definitely a, a, a second in the in the eyes of a lot of people. Um, you had Death of Superman. You had other things that are going on. But Marvel seemed to have more of the pulse of the comic audience. And on top of that, Marvel was leaning in very heavily to the collector's market. They had bought the uh, the trading card company uh, just, just, just previously, so they understood this business. Although, in hindsight, uh, the trading card business going bust due to speculator uh, collapse was probably a, a sign of what was to come with comics, but you know, be that as it may. So Marvel is sitting there as a public company. They've got their own shares. And one thing that I think their investors and, and their board and others were telling them to do was own your distribution, own your product end to end, own the supply chain. So Marvel purchases Heroes World distribution and says, you're the sole distributor. If you want Marvel Comics, you're going through us. And you know, from Marvel's perspective, this seemed like a good idea because comic shops wanted that product. They had the hottest properties, the hardest artists, the hardest, hottest everything. And uh, Heroes World, they could control that bit of the pipe. They would make more money. They would drive shareholder value. On paper, it all makes sense. So what goes wrong? Well, uh, first of all, Heroes World was, uh, you know, for those who were kind of distributing comics, reselling comics at the time, Diamond and Capital were relatively stable. They, they both kind of did their thing. The people, they had a, an operation that, that worked. Yeah, there were complaints. I mean, not nearly as many problems, in my opinion, as we have today with Diamond. But it was, uh, it was still, I mean, they, they knew their business and they were getting things done and, and life was pretty much okay. Heroes World was kind of, they, they, had, they were okay, but it was definitely a step below those two in terms of their their capabilities. Suddenly, as the exclusive distributor, um, it tipped over it immediately. On week one, it tips over. And it tips over in hilarious ways. There's stories about how um, the, uh, the phones and everything were uh, in a room that was not ventilated. So the whole system got so hot it overheated and, and shut down the ability for people to take calls. Um, there, they were, they, you know, shipped things to the wrong place. There were damages. There was just, it was a mess. And the infrastructure for retailers and, and retailers maybe not being the, the most resistant to change because a lot of them were, 
you know, lovers of the business, not necessarily business people. You don't get into comics because you're a you're a wealthy business tycoon. You get into it because you have a love for the industry. Diamond and Capital City had more or less a, a way to deal with people, and they had established that relationship. And now they're forcing retailers to say, hey, if you want Marvel Comics, and of course everybody wanted Marvel Comics because they were the hottest thing at the time, you're going to have to go through us. Unfortunately, um, you know, the timing of all this also, there's one other little factor, which is Marvel's hottest creators that, uh, you know, th that were, were in their roster, you know, a year earlier had fled to Malibu and then to Image. So suddenly that whole, um, that whole world got a lot more shaky. Um, and there was some kind of arrogance within Marvel of like, no, we still have the properties. Who cares if, you know, the artists and people have changed. We still have the characters everybody loves. Well, as they found out, um, that you know, people did follow the creators, people did follow the artists, and so they lost a lot of ground. Meanwhile, they're trying to make up numbers as a public company, and, and there's a scramble going on. So Heroes World collapses immediately uh, from operational problems. Um, they get lost business, they get lawsuits, they get people throwing up their hands, and, and just picture, I, I mean, picture if Diamond um, suddenly, without any of this other virus stuff going on, suddenly just stopped shipping. And comic shops who are dependent on that product, you know, they are open for business. There's not this backdrop of, of COVID and they just don't have product. Imagine the retailers and the uproar and the kind of, you know, burning effigies you would have of Diamond. Um, this was what Heroes World was like. It was just a, it was a nightmare. If you're a retailer, I was a retailer. Um, suddenly I don't have product. Uh, so suddenly I'm going to put all of my energy into selling what I have, which is going to be Image and DC. And on top of that, and this isn't necessarily related to Heroes World, you had the collapse of the speculator market. And a lot of this was, you know, lots of different reasons behind this. But part of it is they just, they went to the well once too often. There's too many bagged comics, too many die cut covers, too many uh, comics that were launched but never went anywhere. Uh, too many cases where the art was clearly phoned in. And you had Image uh, basically come out and just slam a bunch of titles out. And then the, you know, the number two issue would be, you know, months late and the number three issue would be maybe never. And, and so you had a lot of, you had a lot of promises that were not delivered. I, I, I say one way to draw a comparison here, at least to that part of the world is to picture the crowdfunding situation where maybe you get excited about a comic book and then it's late. Okay. The thing you backed. All right. And that sucks, right? You're angry. It's not good. Let's say it's late by, you know, a year. Okay, that, that makes you even more mad, but it's one comic book. You're probably you know, frustrated. You may not back it again, but you know, you'll move on to other comics. Now picture 90% of all the crowdfunded comics were doing this to you. And picture on top of that, you, uh, you, you know, you're not, as a customer, you're not paying for it, right? You're just, uh, you've maybe ordered, you've expressed interest, but you put no cash out. So as a result, you know, maybe you're less mad because you're not cash out of pocket. But you certainly stop giving a damn about that comic. <laughs> it's just, it's out of sight, out of mind. That's what a lot of the speculator bust was all about. It, people were buying comics. They were buying 20 copies of something. The market was oversaturated. It, they, the values were not going up. And on top of that, as a collector, the things that you were you know, going all in on would then not ship or ship late or you never see them again. And you know, comic shops weren't around to open to, to sell them off. And, and so everything just kind of collapsed at once. Um, that was Heroes World. At its core, Heroes World was ill-equipped, which is probably the nicest way to say it, to handle the business that they were given. Um, they did not have the operational structure in place. The uh, the reps were, I mean, they were understaffed, undermanned, undertrained, did not have the equipment, did not have the operational structure to do anything. It'd be like if you or I, I mean, I don't know who's listening to this, but picture if uh, I said today, hey, you're now a comic distributor. You know, DC needs a third one and you're it. Um, ship those comics out tomorrow, go. Uh, what, what would you do? Are you off to your local UPS store to try and buy boxes? I mean, what, what are you going to do? That's how Heroes World felt. It felt like they got some business, which was peculiar because they had a, they were a distributor prior to this. They were just at a much smaller scale. And there's a big difference between being one of many, where you, know, you have a lot of product coming in, you kind of move it, and then suddenly being exclusive, being the only one you can deal with. And you know, that's, that's daunting. And the timetables didn't line up and it just, it just, it failed across the board. Now I started off this video by saying a lot of people were making comparison to quote unquote, the hero's world debacle. 
And there's just a, by now, by now, you probably in your own mind have figured out there's a number of differences between the two. They're really not the same at all. First off, uh, DC didn't go for one. They went for two. Second, DC didn't buy them. Third, the companies they went with, Discount Comic Book Service and Midtown, are proven to be able to distribute and, and get their work. They have that operational capability put in place now. They have very strong customer service. They have, you know, they have the right pieces in place. Um, four, I've, I've lost count of what I said now. I mean, and this is the key. They're not exclusive. If you're a retailer, you don't have to go through either. Now, they are marking things up by territories and others, so you have one that's going to fit you. But that doesn't feel like, and, and in all the messaging, it has not been a, this is the only place to get your comics from. It's, it's here's an option to get your comics. And because this business is open, they're going to be shipping. You may say it's not that much of a choice, but it is. Comic companies can stick with Diamond. They're not having their DC comic orders uh, rejected and, and canceled. And uh, there's even an indication that once the operational kind of you know, smoke clears that these these territories are going to go away as well. That you're you're not going to have to stick with, well, I'm in Lunar territory, therefore I have to work with Lunar. You're going to have some choice. Um, so I, I, there's a bunch of differences here. Now, does that mean that this new plan with DC and these two new distributors are going to work? Uh, no, not for sure. They might not. Um, it's there's plenty of ways this could fail. Um, the least of which is we still are in the middle of a pandemic and how that all affects everything is, you know, anyone's guess, but it, it definitely does change at least the, the forward momentum of all this. So do I think it has, I, I do think that this DC plan is smart in the sense that they have to do something. They have to make some plans. It looks nothing like hero's world. The people who are saying that are, you know, either ignorant of what that situation was like, or deliberately trying to mislead people to, you know, paint something bad before they've even tried it out. Um, more probably that second one. But that's a little bit about what happened with Hero World. The, the question you might have, and it's a question lots of people have, is why didn't Marvel kick the tires more on Hero's World? How they let this happen? And the answer is, well, you know, like many things, Marvel was on fire in the sense that they'd lost a bunch of their corrupt creators. The speculator market was hurting. Their collector card acquisition was not going well. They were a public company, which means they're under a ton of scrutiny that they're probably not equipped to handle from a, just again, from an internal operations perspective, being public means a lot more scrutiny and they didn't have it. And so there are a lot of reasons why Marvel was, was struggling at the time and they probably should have vetted this, but they were making a lot of decisions in haste a lot of decisions that they they definitely regretted later, and it nearly took the company out. I mean, my, Marvel was on the ropes and pretty much uh, about to die, and they they managed to come out of it. And, and Disney scooped them up, which turned out to be a good deal for Disney. But it has been uh, that was that was the interesting saga of Heroes World in a nutshell. Um, a, another video, another time, I'll tell you a kind of a hilarious story of the the most goofy interaction I ever had with a distributor, which was with Heroes World, um, and uh, we can get into kind of some of the sillier calls uh, that I've had over the years. But anyway, I hope that answers some questions. If you have more, leave them in the comments below. Happy to explain. Uh, like, subscribe, share with a friend if you don't mind. Always appreciate that. That sharing it, it it helps the channel it helps me so I, I very much appreciate it follow me on twitter at comic perch and thanks for listening